Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us again on Workshop Quick Takes. We're going to look at fuel injectors in our 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ. Most people don't think of fuel injectors as regular maintenance items, but sometimes they need replacement, sometimes they need to be pulled so that the tips can be soaked to remove excess varnish buildup. Today's maintenance was inspired when we were actually starting a different project, but when we wiggled one of the fuel injectors around, fuel wept down the side from the top of the rail, so that meant the O-rings were failing. O-rings do have a limited lifespan, and on any vehicle, even though your injectors may still be fine, you may need to do this job. Now, because we were starting a different project and then discovered we had to switch to this one, we were a little bit disorganized on this when we took things apart. So, we'll show you all the work, but I'm going to suggest you might want to do it like this. Start with removing the vacuum lines and the intake snout. Then, disassemble the throttle cables and pull those out of the way. Next, remove the electrical harness and components there. And finally, disassemble the fuel rail. Some people might tell you you can do this without taking apart the electrical. I think it is technically possible, but it takes a fair amount of force to work that fuel rail in and out, and there's a real good chance of snagging your harness and damaging that. So let's get outside to the driveway and see what's going on with this one. And then later, in a future part, we'll look at why you might want to do a four-hole injector upgrade, which we did end up doing later also. Okay, first step in route to getting this rail off here so that I can work underneath it. We're going to be spilling gasoline here before too long, so let's disconnect the one thing that makes sparks. And I need to go ahead and label the injectors because these wires kind of cross over each other right here. And yeah, you might be able to follow the color codes later, but it's easier just to label them now. Pretty obviously three, but whatever. Oh, that one's really done. And that one's got fuel coming down it. Well, I guess it's good that it happened now and not let down the road somewhere. Here is old and brittle. There we go. Okay. Next, we need to remove the throttle control cables, and there will be three if you have cruise control installed. Previously, when we did the valve cover gasket, we got up close and personal, so let's show that footage instead. Just need to remove three throttle cables. That one's easy. These plastic ones are gonna be a little bit troublesome, I think. They pop off this way. There we go. And this here is just very gently popped onto those. At some point, you'll want to get all of the air intake and vacuum plumbing out of the way. So that includes the PCV recirculation valve, the breather, and the trumpet snout from the air intake to the air box. Okay. These are obviously not factory. The only reason they're here is because I put them here to keep wires from bouncing around. And they did just fine, but now they need to go away. Okay. That will sit out of the way like that. Now we have full access to the fuel rail. The test port here can tell us if we still got pressure in there. It looks like we had some. I don't imagine it's a lot because this Jeep has the usual check valve problem, and so the fuel tends to run back into the tank. The engine is cold, by the way, so this is not risky at the moment. Oh yeah, there's still some fuel pressure in there. Okay, I'm gonna have to let that out. 
Oh yeah, there's not much in there at all. It's gonna make some mess when the uh, injectors are removed, but nothing tremendous. Looks like these are tens also. I've got one long one there, two shorts and a long. Okay, swapping out to a 10 mil deep socket. That's a stub with a washer. So I see remember that the uh, short side with the washer goes down. Should be pretty obvious though, because the side that's been up and exposed is rustier. The injector rail should now be loose. A little conflicted on whether I should be removing this one or not, but I'm afraid of tearing up the seal in there as well. Injector rail first or injectors? It's like that fuel coming off that one too, so those things are loose. At this point, it doesn't much matter whether the injectors stay in the manifold while the rail pulls away or if they come out with the rail. So we went ahead and removed the six metal retaining clips that hold the injectors to the rail. These clips are simple spring metal and they can break, especially if they're rusty. If that happens, you will need to order replacements. This here's a pretty good illustration of what happens at the number three cylinder here, why it has problems with heating and vapor lock. This is the only one that didn't pull its O-ring, it got stuck in there. It's also different from the others. I think maybe it's been replaced. Gonna need to get that little gasket out of there, clean out these ports, and get a new uh, injector O-ring set. Okay, it's now much later and I'm back from the auto parts store with um, what are hopefully the correct gasket sets. Most of the O-rings that came out look like that. They're kind of flat and pretty hard. A couple of them even tore. So hopefully these do the trick. I have, however, noticed another problem, and that's all these carbon deposits that are down in there. If I pull this out real quick, you can see there's actually supposed to be almost a flat mating surface down in there. So I've got this old marker pen, which is pretty much no more good. It's just about dried out. And because it has a tapered barrel, I can jam it in there like that. And then I'm going to try and finish flushing out everything that might be in there using brake clean. Make sure this is out of the way because I don't want to blast it back up in there either. It seems to be working pretty well. If this doesn't work, I do have a carbon choke cleaner, which is stronger stuff, but I like the fact that this here mostly evaporates if you wait long enough. Well, there's one little residual pocket there that doesn't want to come loose. I think I can knock that loose with a screwdriver. That's what it looked like before anything was done, so huge improvement. Yeah, it's little carbon deposits. Should be the last of it right there. Same deal there again. Got most of it, but have that little lingering corner still stuck there. So I'm gonna break that loose with a screwdriver and just keep going. Consistent with the high temperature issues around injector number three there, I am seeing a little bit more harder bake on than I was in the first two. Okay, that step was tedious, but I hope it's obvious why we don't want all that carbon getting knocked loose while we're installing and fouling up the O-rings, falling into the intake. I mean, it's mostly just fine particulate carbon. It would probably go through the cylinder and then clog up the catalytic converter. So that did the trick for now. I could have used carbon choke cleaner if I wanted a little bit heavier solvent if it was really baked in there, but I think that worked. If you're curious, this is Felpro ES70599. That's what O'Reilly's cross-reference when I asked them to look it up. There's four per package, so in order to do six cylinders, I need 12 and had to buy three packages. Man, there's still some spring to them, but not much. Looks right to me, except this one here looks a little thicker and springier, which is exactly what we're after. New, old. 
Got the parts store just recommended lubricating these with a little WD-40 both to get them on and to put them in. So that, I'm gonna try doing that. Oopsie. <laughs> One of 12. Two of 12, that's one injector complete, and that's also going to be number one cylinder there. Look how flat and hard that is. No wonder they were leaking. Well, okay, I'm looking online, I'm seeing different schools of thought about whether you should populate the injector reel first or populate these first. I think I'm gonna populate the injector reel first and go ahead and put the clips on. Lube these up again. See if that goes in nicely or not. With fresh O-rings, these can take more force than you expect. At the same time, you don't want to rip up the new seal. So, rotate back and forth and wiggle side to side as necessary and try to work the seal in rather than forcing it in one shot. There we go. Okay, so that's the secret. Just kind of walk it in there back and forth. Well, cross fingers are all back in the same way they came out. Okay, for the step recall, we had two uh, studs and two bolts. And the two studs were on the outside and the two stud bolts were on the inside. So that's the order they're going back in. And we'll use a bit of MSEs. At this point, we're ready to finish reassembling the electrical and the vacuum plumbing, both of which are required in order to do a test start and make sure that none of the ejectors are leaking. We'll hold off on the throttle plate until after we do the startup test. Okay, those are going to need some other kind of attachment now that most of the clips are broken, but we'll get back to that after we do a test run to make sure that nothing sprays all over the place.
Okay, before I can do any testing at all, I gotta put the battery terminal back on so I can actually activate the fuel pump. As always, start with a tap test. No big fly pile. Of Oops. No, oh, I guess that's just the uh, accessories recharging. Okay, key in the ignition. I'm gonna put an accessory, but not on. I want the fuel pump to start and to start pressurizing the line. It'll probably take a minute to get some air out of the line anyway, but initially I just want to pressurize the line, go look up there and make sure nothing's squirting out. Cause it... There we go. So far, not getting a pool of gasoline out of any of these. Could just tap that and let it squirt out. That'd give us a head start, wouldn't it? Heard a little bit of air, but no fuel. So maybe I need to turn it over a couple times to get the pump running again. Okay, we're pumping some air out anyway. Oh, got fuel. Okay, we're primed. Now, is it running down any injectors? So far, no. Okay, we reprimed the rail, so now I'm gonna turn it over a few times. Well, that started up nice and quick. Did anything leak? Injector one, clean. Injector two, looks clean. Three, four, five, and six. Not smelling any gasoline under here, so hopefully that's good news. Well, we do have that, so I'll need to get out the code reader and see if it's anything interesting, but hopefully not. All right, before I finish reassembling the throttle, since multiple ones of these broke all or part of their clip real good, I've got these red ties left over from the holidays, so what I'm going to do, since they're easy to see, is just loop them down through like this and around. And that way, I know that these aren't just going to walk back off, because several of them have partially or completely broken clips here. But so far, all of them still have that little hoop down there. So, it's not going to walk off, and I can easily see if one of them has broken. Okay, good enough and easy to spot. Okay, last of all, just gotta get the throttle cables reassembled. This is gonna drop down like that. These are steel bolts into an aluminum casting, so anti-seize is recommended not only to keep them from seizing up, but also to keep them from galling when you first start them in. That one snaps on this way, and this one hooks on. I think we turn these into their holding clips, and that is that. So my last step of the evening is probably going to be to take a low, slow drive with a fire extinguisher over on the seat, and just make sure everything is still kosher as the engine heats up. Okay, so that's the job. It is doable, it is basic, just be very careful and methodical because there's lots of small parts and if you screw them up, your car's catching fire. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again today. That's been another episode of Workshop Quick Takes. Hopefully you're inspired now to tackle a little bit of routine maintenance on your vehicle that you may not have even known was coming due. Word of caution though, we've previously said on this channel that electrical and fuel system are the two quickest ways to burn down your vehicle if you ignore problems or if you do them carelessly. So work within your comfort zone, Take it to a shop if this is not something you really want to do. And if you can smell gasoline, don't keep driving it, please. You're going to end up with a pile of charred rubble rather than the vehicle that you have now. That's all for this episode. We'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?